What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again, bringing you guys another Madden 25 Ultimate Team tip video. And what we're going to be doing today is learning how to build a great group of cornerbacks that can lock down just about any passing game for under 20,000 coins. Better yet, I'm going to show you why these budget cards are very comparable to some of the most expensive cornerbacks in Madden Ultimate Team this year. Now, if you're new to the series, I want to welcome you. And I also want to direct your attention to the description below because there you're going to find a couple of videos that are very similar to this one, but that instead focus on the offensive and defensive lines. But in this video, we're going to be focusing on a position that I personally believe is the most important position in Madden 25 Ultimate Team, that being cornerback. So let's get into the first pairing. Now, the first thing that you're going to notice here when we're comparing these cards is that unlike the offensive and defensive lines, there are a ton of things that we need to take into consideration when we're comparing cornerbacks. Speed, awareness, man coverage, zone coverage, tackling, catching, press, play recognition, and even height. All of these things come into play when we're talking about this position, and I'm going to try and go over the ones that matter most when we're comparing these two cards. So starting first here, we have the playoff edition Dominique Rogers Cromartie, and that's going up against the team MVP playoff edition Tracy Porter card. Now, first of all, the first thing that we need to take a look at here is the overall and the Tracy Porter is rated a 97 versus the Dominic Rogers Camardi being only a 94. Obviously, there are things that go into that that make this Tracy Porter card a better card. However, we need to also consider the fact that the Tracy Porter card is eight times as expensive as the Dominic Rogers Camardi card. So, is it worth that eight times as expensive price? That's the question that we're going to be answering here. So first of all, I think one of the most important things that gets overlooked by a lot of people when they look at these cornerback cards is the height of the player because it doesn't show up directly in the ratings anywhere. However, if you flip over each card, you're going to see that their height is actually listed. And that's because it is important for some of these positions. For cornerback, height is important because you're generally going to be matched up against some of the taller receivers in this game. The best receivers being... You know, the Randy Mosses, the Calvin Johnsons, the Des Bryants, all of these receivers are above six feet tall, and in some cases, six four, six five. So what we need is a cornerback that can match up against that. And there are things like jump that come into play and that can help you with, you know, reducing that gap between the Randy Moss 6'4 and your Tracy Porter 5'11. However, the Randy Moss and the Calvin Johnson, the Des Bryant and all those kind of cards, they also have high jump stats. So again, they're getting an advantage on you with the height advantage alone. So in this comparison, Dominique Rogers Camardi being 6'2 and Tracy Porter being only 5'11 is significant. Although it's only three inches of, of height difference, it still matters. And it's something that I look very closely at. I generally don't like to have a cornerback be below that 5'11 that Tracy Porter is at. So he just barely meets that minimum. However, Dominique Rogers Camardi exceeds that and he's one of the biggest cornerbacks in this game, so that's nice. The other thing is that he does have 97 speed, which, while granted it's only one better than the Tracy Porter 96 speed, does still matter. Now, of course, when you take a look at this graphic, it's pretty obvious. The Tracy Porter card is definitely better than the Rogers Cromartie card. It's green pretty much across the board, other than catching and speed and height, of course. But... I think the most important thing to look at here is the fact that it's not significantly better at anything other than press. And although press is important in this game, and I, I'm not going to deny that, because a lot of times you do want to press the opposing team's receivers when they're coming off the line, I think that it does kind of get a little bit overrated. Because what really matters is their ability to recover and to get into the right position. And I think that the play recognition and the awareness really come into play with those things, as well as in most cases the man coverage statistic. I think at this point most people are running man defense when they're using cornerbacks. Um, obviously you mix it up and you want to include some zone coverage, but the 95 versus the 94 man coverage that goes in favor of Porter by one isn't very significant at all. 
and the the speed increase and the fact that Rogers Cromartie is a few inches taller those things will generally cancel out and you're gonna end up with a pretty similar type of cornerback so in this case I believe that the Dominique Rogers Cromartie card is a better value at 5,000 coins than the Tracy Porter card is at 40,000 coins again not saying that the Tracy Porter card isn't better but when you consider the fact that it's eight times as expensive in my opinion, it's not really worth it. It's not significantly better at anything other than press. So, you know, in the end, I personally believe that the Rogers Camardi card is going to serve you better, especially if you're on a budget. Moving on to our second pairing now, and we're going to be matching up the 94 overall Terrence Newman card, which is a playoff card, against the 97 overall Rod Woodson legendary cornerback card. And again, the price difference here is 5,000 versus 40,000. And these are rough estimates. It's going to vary from console to console and time to time, of course. But again, these cards are very similar in most of the key statistics. The major differences between these two cards that we're going to take a look at are the press from Rod Woodson, which is an 88 versus the only 81 from Terrence Newman. And of course, that's significant. And the other thing that's majorly in the favor of the Rod Woodson card is the tackling statistic. The tackling being 81 from Rod Woodson and only 56 from Terrence Newman. Now, at first glance, I can definitely see why people think that this is a huge advantage for Rod Woodson. And, and I guess it is in some ways. But my personal opinion is that if your cornerbacks are the players that you're relying on to make tackles, you're doing it wrong. You need your defensive line, your linebackers, and in some cases, your safeties to make tackles. We don't care whether or not our cornerback makes tackles. We want them to knock away passes, get interceptions, and lock down the opposing team's receivers. And that's what the Terrence Newman card does. It has good awareness at 88. It's, you know, it does lag a little bit behind the Rod Woodson at 92, but it does have pretty similar statistics in man and zone coverage. It has 94 man coverage, 92 zone coverage. It's effective at both of those things, which is very nice to have. It gives you a very versatile card. The other thing that this one has that the Rod Woodson doesn't have is 96 speed versus 91 speed. And five speed difference at cornerback can be the difference between a knockaway or a touchdown for the opposing team. So although the Rod Woodson card is definitely good at man coverage, zone coverage, has nice press, has good play recognition, good awareness, the speed kills when he has to go up against a 99 speed wide receiver. When he has to try and stop a guy like Randy Moss, he's not going to be able to keep up. It, it just isn't going to happen for him. So that's where you need your Terrence Newman card because he can match up. Now where the Newman does take a little bit of a hit is that it is only 5'10". And I generally, like I said before, I don't usually like my corners to be below 5'11". He is right on that borderline, of course, at 5'10". But I still think this card has its advantages. It's so fast. It has great man coverage, very good zone coverage, and a, a great play recognition and awareness in comparison to some of the other lower rated, uh, lower priced corners. So the Terrence Newman card is one that I would definitely recommend getting your hands on if you can afford it at 5,000 coins. Most people should be able to just do a couple solo challenges and get this thing because it's going to be an upgrade on most of your cornerback cards that you have. And if you're taking a downgrade from cornerback and you're selling a card like this Rod Woodson, it's going to play pretty effectively for you and it's going to be well worth this, the 35,000 coins that you're going to save. Up next, we're going to be comparing the 94 overall playoff Keenan Lewis card to the 97 overall Darrell Revis card that was recently introduced when he became a new member of the New England Patriots. And I think one of the things that really caught me off guard with this is that this card is going for 70,000 coins. And again, while overall it is definitely better than this Keenan Lewis card, I personally don't think it's 66,000 coins better. Because when you compare these two cards, the Revis card really doesn't blow away the Lewis card in any statistic. The biggest advantage that the Revis card has is that it is 7 better with awareness, but it's still not like a 99 at awareness, it's only a 92. But the big thing, of course, that it does have is it does have a 97 man coverage statistic. And that is 4 better than the Keenan Lewis at only a 93. However, 
they are exactly the same in zone coverage. Both of them are very good in zone coverage at 94. They both have a great press rating of 92. And the other thing is that the Keenan Lewis card is six feet tall versus the Darrell Revis being 5'11", so it is an inch taller. Now, the Keenan Lewis card also does have a 75 tackle statistic versus the Revis having only a 65. So that's something, I guess, to think about. But like I said before, I, I don't personally worry too much about the tackling statistic. It's just something that I included because a lot of people do care about it. So again, what we're asking ourselves in this is not necessarily whether the Keenan Lewis card is better than the Darrell Revis card. We're asking ourselves, is it worth the price difference? And considering the fact that it's almost identical to the Revis card in most of these key statistics, my opinion is that the Keenan Lewis card is a significantly better value and you're gonna save yourself 66,000 coins. Give this guy a try and see if he's worth it to you because my opinion is that this card is definitely well worth having on your team and it's one that you're really not gonna notice a huge difference if you get rid of the Revis and go to the Lewis. Last but not least, let's compare the Final Edition Elite Xavier Rhodes 92 overall card to the 95 overall Night Train Lane Legendary card. Now, I think that a lot of people would assume that the Night Train Lane is one of the best cornerbacks in this game. And with its 92 catch statistic versus the Xavier Rhodes being only a 75, there's definitely something to be said about that. There is not a cornerback in this game that has been released yet that has higher than this 92 catch rating from Night Train Lane. However, it does lag behind in two of the most significant statistics when it comes to cornerbacks, those being man coverage and zone coverage. Xavier Rhodes has 92 man coverage and 95 zone coverage. Both of those are two better than the Night Train Lane card. It is also one speed faster, and it has a better press rating at 90 versus Night Train Lane's 87. So while it does lag behind in the catching department, most of the cornerback cards in this game are going to be behind the Night Train Lane at that. In my opinion, the Xavier Rhodes card is actually a better overall cornerback than the Night Train Lane. And I know that's kind of crazy because there is a 31,000 coin difference between these two cards. But my opinion is that you need speed, man coverage, zone coverage, and press. Those are the major four things that go into whether I want a cornerback or not. And in this case, the Xavier Rhodes is actually better in all of those statistics. So guys, those are the four cornerbacks that I recommend. The total price of them is roughly 18,000 coins. If you take the cards that I put on the right and combine them together, you're coming up to roughly 185,000 coins. So more than 10 times as expensive. Is it worth it? You be the judge, I guess. Thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you could press that like button, that would help me. And be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be bringing you more of these videos. We're going to go over every position in this game and figure out the best value cards at those positions. So thank you guys for watching. Up next, we're going to take a look at the safety position. And I think you guys are going to be kind of interested in that one. So thank you again, and I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.